At least for today, I think I have a final answer on the dual piston bracket, which is this uh, uh, mount right here, and this setup. Okay, now, I was looking at it yesterday, and I figured out that I can, I can, I could make it work uh, by using the 720 caliper and putting 180 thou of uh, spacer in between the hub and the rotor, and obviously it's not going to be washers, it's going to be a, a plasma or a CNC plate uh, cut out of a 3 16 plate or sheet or whatever. Um, but the fact that I can do it doesn't necessarily mean that I should. And in this case, what I finally uh, came to the conclusion on, I was sitting here looking, and let's zoom in a little bit there. Okay, well, I guess the light's good enough anyway. You can see, now I've got this held up here with this, uh, this spacer here, and it's real close uh, to centered. If the pad wore all the way down to nothing, okay, and was just this chunk of metal, it would not go through there. Cool, no problem. Um, same thing on the bottom here it would not go through there, okay? But here's the clincher. If this rotor wears down, if the caliper uh, sticks and wears one side more than the other, that's not a very big safety margin at all, okay? Now that would be faulty brakes. It wouldn't necessarily uh, come back to bite me or anything like that. So I think that's enough reason right there to not do it. So I was also doing some looking too, and I found a Winters rotor. Uh, if you've looked at the Toyota 5 lug upgrade that I've been doing, uh, that's another project that's up on YouTube too. That's using a Winters rotor, but it's like a 11 and 3 quarters. They, I can get a 10 and a half inch rotor that's one inch thick. Okay. Now 10 and a half is bigger than this. This is only 9 and 3 quarters. Okay. That would help move this out to gain some of that clearance okay that would be uh quite nice but let's go to uh let's go to one inch here switch it over to millimeters so 25 millimeters oh that adds that adds a good bit there that's a that's a millimeter and a half on each side basically you know i was saying i've only got about a millimeter 1.15 millimeters here uh if everything's perfectly even and all that kind of stuff to catch that, okay? So if the rotor was one inch wide, that would gain me another millimeter. And you know, and, and that would be better. That would be a whole lot better. I don't know if I will pursue that or not. So that would, the one inch rotor would actually be about the same centered up, you know, with, with the dual piston bracket centered up over the one inch. That would be really close uh, to having the same spacing as this one, you know. Obviously, this one's uh, not centered right now and doesn't really, uh, it's kind of hard to look at it and tell. Now, let me look at something else here real, real quick. If they also have an inch and an eighth rotor, uh, but it's an 11 inch, so... Let's go out to let's go out to an inch and an eighth. One point one two five. That's close enough. Let's switch it to metric. Whoop, yeah, inch and an eighth on the fractions there. Uh, twenty-eight and a half. Twenty-eight and a half. And the gap here is thirty-two. So, you know, that's going to leave roughly a four millimeter. Yeah, about three and a half millimeters. So that would actually be the better one. That would really get it really close. The 11 inch would pull it out more, uh, the 11 and three quarter. So I'll, I'll play with those good, you know, I'm just rambling to myself. A good chance I won't post any of this uh, or much of it. So I'm going to go back to the uh, other bracket design. Uh, it's going to be a cross. I think I'm going to go to this one with the bigger 
spacers, bigger around and that stuff, uh, for the plug welding and that. And yeah. And I'll try to get it uh, changed up a bit or whatever so that I can uh, have the uh, different ears or the use the same ears. Ugh, blah blah blah.